We are now joined by Senior Counsel for Litigation and Public Policy at the ACLJ, Ben Sisney. Now, Ben, a topic that I know, especially for our Rumble viewers, I'll say that, that gets a lot of attention. Uh, we haven't talked about it in a little while because we now have an update, though, in the whistleblower situation and how we're also taking action there. Maybe give a little setup to what we're talking about and then lead into what we're doing. Okay, absolutely. So, um, as you know, we represent um, two whistleblowers um, currently, and um, they're both in different procedural postures. I'm going to stay out of the weeds on it, but but sure. one is uh, on appeal in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit here in Washington, um, and briefing is underway, and we're expecting to have an oral argument sometime in the next few months. Um, it's a very important case, challenging an old rule that that's preventing whistleblowers, the FBI, um, from um, getting any kind of judicial review, any, any kind of, of, of somebody making sure that their due process rights were honored. Uh, it's kind of a similar situation with our other client, Marcus Allen. Um, the, the one in court is Garrett O'Boyle, um, both of whom have made headlines over the last year, Seen them uh, on and the rightfully show. so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and um, so um, that that's that's the setup. Uh, just recently, the Department of Justice OIG Office of Inspector General just issued a a, a memo a report uh, with some recommendations and some observations. And while it is um, softer than it needs to be, um, and and uh, there, there is plenty more to be done, it is a very important step for us in highlighting, and it confirms from the OIG, the DO, DOJ's own Office of Inspector General, that the, the Department of Justice components, including the FBI, have not been following the law. They've been violating the statute. One of the excuses, if you look in a footnote, is because, well, we stopped doing that during COVID. <laughs> I'm sorry, here the FBI. <laughs> you know, you don't, and, have and, you don't have that ability. Yep. Right, absolutely, and, and and I mean it, it. It would be funny if it wasn't so serious, and so, um, but they're not giving um, separate from the court or the judicial route for review. They've been denying these whistleblowers the opportunity for internal review, basically, really blocking them from even filing an internal complaint with the DOJ, OIG, the Inspector General. And the inspector general's office says that violating the statute, and, and I said I'm not going to go into weeds, but I mean it, this is complex stuff. Yeah. There's there, there there's a lot of rules and statutes and presidential directives and orders that apply here, and it's and it's all interconnected. And we're working through it, and, and we've got a lot more work to do. But this is a big big step. Ben, I want you to walk through. I just got this letter. Will just presented me here. I have it right here about what we are currently doing in the situation involving Columbia University and obviously these protests and the lack of security for Jewish students on campus. Absolutely. Thank you, Logan. Uh, I just want to point out you were spot on a while ago when you said that uh, we're busy. This is an incredibly busy time. The attacks are constant. It's classrooms. It's courtrooms. Um, it's all across the country, state and federal, and we're engaging everything, and every case is important. There's no case that's too small. There's some big ones going on right now, and we're going to hit some of those um, in, in with what's going on at Columbia University in New York. So last night we filed um, an administrative complaint with the U.S. Department of Education, um, sent a copy to their New York office as well. Uh, want to uh, prevent them saying, oh, we didn't get it. The other one got it. So they both got it. And um, I'm expecting a response from them relatively promptly. I mean, the, the, the statute says they shall respond promptly. So um, we'll see what promptly means. But um, this is a, a procedure we can use because um, we're, we're equipped and we, we qualify to file this kind of a complaint. Uh, we don't represent a student up there, at least not yet. I would love to, uh, by the way. Um, but this is, a, this is a complaint process we can utilize even without a client to speak up on behalf of the groups of students. I'll tell you, I've talked to some students and their parents who've been impacted by these. Uh, they're not protests, they're riots, really. And um, many of them are just terrified to come forward to be a plaintiff. And I understand that. I mean, that's a tough decision. Um, and uh, so, but working working under these scenarios uh, with this kind of threats and fear that these these sort of riots and the the, the complicit university employees and professors create for these these Jewish students um, is creating an unsafe environment. And there's Title VI of the Federal Discrimination Code um, deals with that, and it, it prohibits universities in this case who receive federal money. That's uh, always that's an important hook from uh, allowing basically an environment that makes a student feel unsafe because uh, of several uh, qualifications. In this case, the relevant one is race or ethnicity. Um, 
and um, uh, they have obligations. And in our view, um, they're not meeting them. So we took action. Ben, you know, as we've talked about these encampments, as they called them, pro-Hamas rallies, as others call them, uh, on campus, and, and we've talked about it, one of the major themes we've seen from the viewers of the show is, what can we do about it? And I think it's important to, to highlight for the audience, this is what ACLJ attorneys do every day, is they find a way that we can get involved and affect change. And it, it sometimes takes a minute to really get creative, use the resources we have, use the law, and find a way for us to engage to affect that change. As you mentioned, for many people, filing a lawsuit against a university may not be their first choice because they're already afraid for their safety. And then if they're a plaintiff in a federal court case, then that just highlights the individual even more so than they already felt targeted maybe on their campus. But our attorneys were able to use the law, use our expertise in these areas, and to find a novel way for us to address the issue and hopefully represent, one, the members of the ACLJ, but also represent the students on campus, even if not directly, by filing such a complaint as this. Yeah, that's, that's right. And and we find, and, and, and you all know full well that we, we, we are constantly looking for um, avenues, even when the mainstream or sort of the establishment or conventional wisdom, uh, you know, courses of action don't fit for a particular reason. Um, we just, we, we find, um, and, and I love this about our team, we find that if you just dig in and if you just look, if you put the time and the effort in, which we get to do thanks to our supporters, but if you just if you're willing to look deeper, there there oftentimes way more often than not, there's something you can do, and that something even if it seems small at first, often um, snowballs and leads to something bigger, something more impactful. Filing this complaint, for example, may lead to to one of our listeners or a friend or a relative of one of our listeners giving us a call. That would be fantastic. Um, but but you got to be able to take to take the action, but be willing to to. Um, to look beneath the surface, and that's what we did here. By the way, if you are one of those family members or you are that person who feels like they're being targeted, all you have to do is go to aclj.org slash help. Fill out a very simple form at aclj.org slash help, and you get connected with a lawyer at no cost. And we do that. We could do it and offer it for you and for anyone else at no cost because of our incredible supporters and champions. People that give one-time donations, which are the majority, by the way, and are greatly appreciated. And then the 20 plus thousand people that give on a monthly recurring basis. And I would love to see that number continue to grow because as that number grows, we can bring in more attorneys. We can create more media content around these topics that really need it. And they need people need to hear this stuff and they don't hear it without you and without your support.